welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented to you by the Women's Business Owner Alliance of Pioneer Valley, better known as WBOA. I'm Marianne Marzano with Marianne Talks, and this is my co-host. Hi, Ida Tassinari from Real Living Real Estate Professionals. I'm glad to have Laurie here today. And you want to introduce yourself? I would love to. Hi, ladies. I'm Lori Fortuna from Lori Fortuna Coaching. Great. So, coaching, what do you do? Oh, I help uh, mainly re retail and restaurants, but really any kind of business that, that struggles in the area of customer service. But I really help them from a standpoint that they want to stand out from their competition. So essentially, I, I go in and really help them build a solid foundation with their team so that they provide that consistent, wow, customer service. Because I, great. Excuse me, I see a lot of the companies now will have a promotion to have their customers fill out a survey for a chance to win a gift card. Mm -hmm. And that seems to me like uh, more uh, companies are looking for that feedback so yeah. they can improve their customer service yeah. experience. Yeah, a lot of companies do that, yeah, for sure. So, so what's the basis, like the first thing a owner or manager should be doing or looking for? Well, the very first thing before they even hire someone is really being very clear on what, who they want to hire and, and who would be the best of the best in that position and, and holding out for that right candidate because ultimately, you know, especially in retail and restaurants, you know, Sally called out and she, she, she is a, 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 a ringer on Saturday afternoon or evening and no one else wants that shift. It's really e easy to say, oh, let's just hire someone who's willing to work that shift instead of finding, some, finding someone that smiles and that will be courteous to the guests and all of that. So really holding true to finding the best of the best employees. Right. I know I've made that mistake in, you know, getting somebody just because I desperately needed somebody and then getting rid of them was harder and caused more damage. Yeah. So it's so true. It's so true, Marianne. I mean, not only it, 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 it stresses, I know, because I've done the same thing, it mm -hmm. stresses the person in charge out. You know, it also stresses the entire team out because the, the good, the, you know, the, the high caliber, the good, the good employees get frustrated because they're doing their job and these other people aren't. Mm -hmm. And it really, it, it just, it's really a stressor. There's no doubt about it. Yes. Would you think that most of your clients um, that w recruit your services, are they a corporate or the a mom and pop type businesses? It's, it's really a combination. I mean, because of my corporate career, I have, I've really been involved with retail and restaurants most of my, m well, most of, you know, all of my career really. And so m a, a lot of my contacts and who I know are, are through that, but it really, anybody that has employees, and actually I've worked with some, some clients that actually don't have employees, it could be contractors. I mean, whoever's really representing your brand needs to be, a, a, you know, representative of how you want your brand to be represented. So it could, you know, making sure that, you know, if you're hiring those contractors, you know, whether it's attorney, marketing, you know, whether it could just be, you know, temporary employee, whatever, you want to make sure that you're having the, the best of the best, you know, represent your brand. Sure. And what's your first um, key factor when you talk with your future clients? It's really understanding where they are right now and, and w where they would like their business to be. And usually it's, you know, the first thing out of a business owner's mouth is, well, I want to be making more money. And, and, and actually, all of this will do that because ultimately, if a customer, is, it, it's a proven fact that if a customer is willing to spend more money if they are happy with how they're being treated. Okay. So ultimately, you're not only going to get recurring customers back, you know, the, again and again and again, they're going to tell friends because it's so rare that you, I, I, I don't know about you ladies, but I know when I go, it's very rare that I come home and say, oh my God, I had a great customer experience today. And then, of course, when I do, my husband wants to strangle me because I never stop talking about it. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's really something that doesn't happen a lot. So it really can help you stand out from your competition and, and help grow your business pretty quickly. Sure. And it is important because you go in and I could not say think this coffee was the best coffee in the whole world, but the atmosphere was great and the people were great, yeah. I'll want to go back there. Yeah. And maybe give them the suggestion that, I want to come back here, but can you do something about your coffee, you yeah. know? Yeah. So it's, it's that customer yeah. loyalty. Now, did you ever have the problem that 
the problem was the owner or the manager? Never, man. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Actually, that's usually the, it starts, it really does start at the top because ultimately they, they, they learn from who they work with, you know, whether it's the, you know, whether it's the lead boss or the lead, the leader of the team or the manager or the owner or all of the above, you know, and, and, and ultimately, you know, when someone comes to me, they know that they have an issue and, you know, through the figuring out where they are now and where they want to go, during that process, they they understand very clearly that things have to change because you know I, I share with them very early on the definition of, ins of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again exactly. and expecting a different result. So they're going to have to be they're going to have to want to be willing and open to change just as much as their team is going to be because they need to lead by example. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just won't work any other way. So do you work with um, not just the owners? or the managers of the business. You work with the uh, individual employees themselves it's, yep. as a team uh, type approach to it, or what is your approach to get everybody on board on the same page? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Ida. Yeah, so it, it, in each company it's a little bit different. It depends on how many layers there are and where the issues are, but in most cases it is all the layers. You know, I might be not as hands-on, so like for example with the leadership team I may be doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, on a regular basis to help them change their behaviors, whereas like with their with their, with their, their team members it might be more training or, or um, you know, group coaching or, mm -hmm. you know, the things that we need to do to kind to help move the needle at that level. It, it, it varies, but yeah, everybody's really involved. And then how do you assess the improvements besides the customer feedback, or do you have a method of trying to assess how um, your services has provided a better outcome? Well, after at the end, first of all, their turnover will end up evol evolving to be better, so they'll see consistency there. And then, yes, absolutely, their their evaluations by the, made by their customers. Those surveys are critical. In the midst of it, we just, I mean, it's really hitting the points along the way of our plan. So, mm -hmm. for example, I'm working with a client right now who, um, you know, had a had a, a front house manager that we were wondering whether or not it would that 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 person would be the right person for the job, and it, ended up, you know, that individual decided to leave, which was a great opportunity for us to upgrade. And instead of having a front of the house manager, we now have a GM coming in to, to, to oversee the entire operation. So it's like that person is a mini version of the owner. Mm -hmm. So we'll be overseeing everything. And ultimately, we were able to check the boxes as we're going and starting to see that accountabilities are starting to shift. So one of the big issues with this particular company was that ultimately, you know, the leaders really weren't holding the team members accountable. You know, so they'd come in not wearing their uniform, they'd not come in on time, they'd not, you know, there's different things. So um, you start to see all of those things shift and you find yourself not having to um, repeat the same things over and over and over again or getting frustrated that those things aren't happening because customers notice that. Mm -hmm. You know, they notice when there's those consistencies aren't there, and it's really a, a key piece of running a business. Do you, no, go me. ahead. No. Um, do you find that social media is beneficial? Because I know Yelp is a big uh, provider, and I was surprised because I always thought it was just for restaurants or service type industries, but now they have reviews on almost everybody, every type of service, mm -hmm. uh, even real estate. Mm -hmm. They have uh, reviews on that too. Yeah. So what is your best advice to your clients? Take that, take the, any, any review that you have, whether it's a good one or, or areas of opportunity, and, and, and really take it to heart. And don't put a Band-Aid on the, on the specific complaint. So like if someone you know, gives you a bad cup of coffee, you know, gee, I had a horrible cup of coffee, but you know, the service wasn't so bad. You know, there's, there's a bigger issue there. S there's training behind the scenes. People either don't know, they don't know something behind the scenes. So take that as a huge learning to go back and figure out what caused that to prevent that from happening again. Mm -hmm. Really the biggest key that I've always told all of uh, any customer is that you, you really, the key is to wowing your guests is to stay a couple of steps ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have to be doing anything huge. I mean, it could be you're, get, you're, you're going in buying four cups of coffee for your friends and you got a handful and one of the employees goes over and opens the door for you right. as you're walking out of the place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be anything huge, but it's really, you know, really just staying a couple of steps ahead of everybody. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there's there's so many businesses out there now, mm -hmm. and I think that w it wasn't that important years ago, but it seems to be more of a importance nowadays mm -hmm. that people are talking about customer service or the, the feel of the place. It, we're getting a little bit more wooey about everything, mm -hmm. it seems. So I think that it's timely that you're doing this for business owners. Well for, That's well, for me, it's because I was kind of suffering from withdrawal, meaning I grew up in a very entrepreneurial family, not to date myself too much, but, <laughs> um, you know, and my both my grandparents and my parents had their own business, and, you know, they didn't come home. They weren't at the dinner table at 5 o'clock in the right. evening. And, and one of the things, and I mean, they probably broke a few labor laws because I think I was working at the age of nine, mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I saw consistently was that you have to make your customers happy mm -hmm. and somewhere along the line we've uh, with with the immediacy of you know the smartphones and all of the electronics I think we've lost sight of that intimacy mm -hmm. with a customer and that yes. connection yeah. and ultimately you know I, I know as a, as a consumer I miss it because it's just nice to know that you go in and it's not next you know, they're waiting on me next. You know, like I, like there's literally some stores I go in and I feel like I'm in an assembly line, right. which is a horrible feeling. Yes. Right, because I think it's important to have that human interaction with the individual and don't treat them, like you said, as almost like a number. Yeah. And they're just trying to get through their day. And you go into some businesses and to get some service, it's almost like an inconvenience to the employee. Yeah. And we're actually contributing to their salaries and it's today we, we we need to get back more common decency and smile and say thank you and appreciate the service that you do get and let somebody know when they do a good job because yeah. that makes yeah. the the uh, employees day as well and then maybe go that one step further and go to the boss yeah. or the manager and say this employee you know really went above yeah. her job yeah well, and, and, and it, but think about the things that you just said, Ida. They're so basic. I mean, a yes. smile, a smile. It doesn't cost anything. Saying please and thank you. Those are manners that our parents taught us. Exactly. You know, it's just those basics, but somewhere they got hidden in, 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 in the grand scheme of things. Yes, exactly, because our society has gone into more of an isolation with texting, and yeah. they don't want to make a phone call. They'd rather text mm -hmm. or email. Mm -hmm. And you, you've lost that civility where you're going to say, please, thank you, hold the door, let somebody go in front of you in, mm -hmm. in the grocery line when they have two things and you have many. You know, it's just, you know, you need to start a campaign to just smile and, and appreciate each other as humans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the owners that you work with can kind of be the... I don't know what you'd want to call them, those trailblazers, mm -hmm. so that everybody's like, wow, why is everybody going to that business? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because they're making a difference. Yeah. So what are a couple of things that you'd like owners to know that they can, if, if right now maybe it's not in their budget to hire somebody? Just like a couple of little things that they can try working on. Yeah, well, the really cool part about my, my, my seven-step plan is that it all can be it all can be done in house. The the, the challenges they need to be disciplined to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest piece is really making sure, you know, that they, they hire the right people. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have the right person, you know, hey, if Sally's at the front register and she doesn't smile, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have some capabilities. Maybe there's something, you know, maybe she can stock stock shelves. Maybe she can, you know, do something True. else, mm -hmm. you know, that will work. If she shows up and she's a valued employee, you know, or maybe, just maybe, she has hadn't been trained. So, you know, really making sure that you have the right people in the right place and then making sure that they're trained. And when I say trained, it doesn't mean, okay, you know, put them in front of videos or, you know, have them read this manual and hope to God they, you know, embrace it and then send them packing and figure it out for themselves. The thing before I let, I like to have anybody touch or experience any of our customers is make sure that they're actually training you back on what they learned. Because oh. even if I stood by you and trained and showed you exactly how to do something, the human mind can only absorb so much. So you want to make sure that every single person that's going to impact your customers gets it and does it exactly the way 
you want them to get it. You know, whether it's a you know a policy, a it's how it, how they make something or how they ring or what whatever it might be, mm -hmm. so that they're not caught off guard because ultimately you know, essentially they're on stage when they're in front of customers. And if they don't have all the answers to questions and they're not doing it the right way, they don't feel good about themselves. And that doesn't make people, you know, employees feel good either. Right, right. Now, you mentioned the seven steps. Can you give us an idea of what your seven steps are? Sure, sure. So it starts out by really evaluating it what, you know, the first couple of steps are, you know, where are you right now with your business? Where do you want to be? And how do we close that gap? And, and, and really a lot of it may be around people. And then we do a deeper dive irregardless because we still want to make sure. What are, we take a look at all the people on the team. Are they the right people? You know, uh, how would you rank them? And basically, you know, is there another spot for them if they're not the right person for that position? And then we segue into, you know, once we kind of figure out who, who should be on the team and hire the right people that might be missing, making sure everybody is trained. And even the people that are doing a good job, really doing a refresher to make sure everyone is on the same page. And then that piece of tra having them train it back to make sure that they fully get that's it. Great. Because that's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you'd be surprised at how many different ways someone can make a cup of coffee. Yes. You'd be surprised. <laughs> um, or whatever, you know, whatever it is that they might do. Because they, you know, if they don't know, they'll figure it out on the spot themselves. And chances are it won't be the right way. And then, it, then the last few steps segue into the accountability. So once you get everything set up, you want to make sure that the leaders are holding them accountable to those things. Because ultimately, if you've trained them on these things, and ultimately they haven't, you know, they're like, oh, I got it. And then all of a sudden they start shortcutting because it's just easier to do it that way. Right. You know, if, if, if a leader walks by and doesn't call that out, essentially what happens, they go back to the way that they had been doing it, of which course. essentially is the shortcuts and who pays the price, the customer. Right. So really the rest of that is that. And then really just, you know, putting pieces into place to retain their, the employees and customers to keep it, to keep it going the, uh, right. indefinitely. That's great. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, um, is there anything that we've missed or anything that you'd really like to say? Oh, I mean, other than that, I mean, I, I love the fact that what I offer, you know, companies can do themselves. So, I mean, it, uh, there's a lot of resources on my website, free resources, but uh, there's a book list and blogs about all of the, all the topics that we've been talking about, you know, so, that, you know, anybody at any time can go out to LoriFortuna.com and, 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 you know, it's, it's there for, for them to review artic really good articles and things of that nature, you know, but really just, you know, take a couple of those steps and doing one thing differently will make an impact it That's really great. will um, and it you know it's amazing to see how you know how much of an impact it can make because it really is all about the people that's that's your solid foundation to success great Laura you've been invaluable I'm sure to many people watching so I really thank you I thank you a lot thank you ladies and I thank you, thank you as well and if you want more information about Lori, check out her website at LoriFortuna.com. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, ladies. If you'd like to know any more about WBOA, it's WBOA.org. Thank you.